So in writing the happiness hypothesis, I found that there are two, there are two zones of super concentrated psychological wisdom. And they are the Buddhists and the Stoics. I mean, there's wisdom in every culture, but but which are the wisdom traditions that secular people in you know, I mean obviously Christianity, Judaism, they have enormous bodies of very useful ideas and work, especially for those who are Jewish and Christian. But for secular people, it's not a coincidence that they're mostly drawn to Buddhism. That's like where they all go. Um, and, and I find Stoicism is even better, more applicable. But what they both have in common is a lot of ideas about consciousness. They all notice we spend a lot of our time worrying about things that we can't control. And uh, Buddha says, we are what we think, all that we are arises with our thoughts. Epictetus, the Stoic, um, says, it is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. So they all realize something happens, we freak out, we make ourselves miserable, and then either we're wrong about what happened, or we're right about it, we can't do anything about it, so we just add to our suffering, or we're distorted about it, so we can't fix it. And so, uh, so I think Stoicism has really survived the ages. It's, it's wonderful to read Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. He was writing it just for himself. It wasn't a book that he thought would ever be seen. And he talks about how, you know, everyone, all these great people, they're all gone and forgotten, and he'll be gone and forgotten too. And it's such a joy to read this. You know, no, you were wrong, Marcus. The, this writing is so good. We're still reading it today. Basically, CBT is just those key insights from Stoicism and Buddhism that we, our minds do these things automatically. In CBT, they're called cognitive distortions. Everybody does them to some degree. So the more famous ones are overgeneralization, black and white thinking or dichotomous thinking. Everything's either good or evil. Uh, mind reading, just like, I know she's thinking this. How do you know? Um, discounting the positive. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm a failure. And someone says, no, look, you succeeded there. Oh, but that was a special circuit. You know, so we, we do these, we all do these things occasionally. And what, what uh, Aaron Beck and, and a few others found in the 60s was that people who are depressed do them a lot more. And it was thought that, well, depression must be from something deep. I mean, if you're changing their thinking, that's just you're, you're changing the symptoms. Like, no, it turns out if you change their thinking, you actually end the depression. So that was the great discovery they made um, um, about cognitive behavioral therapy. And I, I learned about it at Penn, which is the world center of cognitive therapy research. Aaron Beck was there. But it wasn't until I wrote a book with, uh, with Greg Lukianoff, um, a friend of mine who had suffered from suicidal depression when he was younger, and he credits CBT with saving his life. And that's why CBT played such a big role in our book together, The Coddling of the American Mind.